Hello everybody, it's SD Matt Haven here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Captured King Tiger. This is a premium tank, that is the deal of the week. I highly recommend to get it. I wasn't expecting too much out of this tank, but so far it has surpassed every single one of my expectations that I had for it to begin with. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and jump right into the engine here. Keep in mind, this is pretty much a Tiger II with a little bit of better power to weight ratio because of the lighter gun. Uh, 10 horsepower to ton, 38 top speed, 12 reverse, 700 horsepower overall. Honestly, it's not too bad at the engine. Uh, just look at the models inside the tank. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of fuel tanks, the transmissions in the front, uh, gas tanks in the back, main engine block dead center, uh, getting set in fire by getting shot in the rear. It happens quite a bit inside a lot of German tanks, especially with the transmission being in the front. Shooting the lower plate, you can have a lot of issues. Now, jumping over to this 88 millimeter. Yes, this is a Tiger II with an 88, a competitive 88, keep in mind, of 212 base penetration and premium penetration being 259. Now, the reload on this is down to about 4.91. That is with a gun rammer, brothers in arms, and a premium consumable and 100% trained crew. Concealment on this tank is not exactly the greatest at 0 0.09, but, you know, foliage, bushes, and knocking down trees can really help you boost your camouflage rating and allow you to take shots, even in spots that you should be spotted. Now, jumping over to the tracks, you have 30 degrees of rotational speed, and honestly, your soft and medium resistances are really nice at 0 0.09, well, 0 0.9, and then 1.1. The only time that you're going to notice a real big problem inside this tank is on that soft terrain at 2.2. Other than that, this thing is phenomenal. I, <laughs> I'm having fun. You know, even though the Tigers, they have got not the thickest turret, the, the fire rate this tank has makes up for it with its 9.67 rounds per minute. It is just great. Now, you have 400 meters of view range, so you can get away with sacrificing coded optics for something else, but honestly, with the gun dispersion values that this gun has at 0.32, you don't really need to. Along with the maximum gun depression of 8 degrees and max elevation of 15, the gun depression at 8 degrees is really nice. 15, it's lacking just a little bit, not a whole lot, you know. Then again, if you have to aim up against somebody, they're probably going to be overmatching your top armor or going through you in general, and avoiding those type of, type of combat is just your best bet. Now, reload time, your base reload at 6.2, it's not bad. 2.3 aim time, honestly, this gun is a very solid gun. Yeah, just so much fun. All right, now jumping over to the turret here, we've got 400 meters of view range. As I said, you can get away with not running coded optics, but since your gun dispersion values are so nice, increasing your fire rate, increasing your view range, best way to do it. Your radio, 710 meters, it assists damage and everything else. I will try to get a video of out on that later in the future but not too worried about it right now uh ammo rack all right here here's the issue tire side of the top of the tank tire back of the turret on both sides keep in mind so trying to side scrape inside this or people who are just going to shoot you right below the turret it's going to hurt but most of the time not everyone knows to aim to try and shoot the ammo racks but the positioning of this one an auto aim can hit it so tapping rb and driving around somebody firing um, if you're in a higher up tank or the same hike tank, it'll focus on that position and they will hit your ammo rack. And it is a 25% chance to hit the ammo rack. However, the trade-off here, the ammunition. This tank actually gets quite a bit of rounds at a total of 72. 72 rounds. I just had to do math. My brain today is giving up. Well, your standard rounds are AP. They readjust by 5 meters. 5 mil... No, 5... 5 degrees. 5 degrees. Yes, 5 degrees. Not 5 meters. That would be way too much. Okay. <laughs> at 212 base penetration along with 1,000 velocity. They're, they're, they're pretty quick. Your APCR travels at 1,250 meters per second. Not just that. APCR readjusts by a total of 2 degrees on impact. And heat shells do not readjust at all. They just try going through the armor no matter what the thickness is. The high explosives on this, um, I load a couple of them especially with the fire rate you have against, let's say, like Shaskas, SCs-130PMs, or Scorpions, for instance. No problem. I'm probably going to be loading a couple more, getting 12 rounds in there, because it's just fantastic. Now, jump over to the armor here. Your turret's at 185, an effective armor rating of over 216. So, against some Tier 9s and uh, most Tier 10s, they're just going to go straight through your turret. Now, your top plate at 150, 
Maxing out your gun depression should make this top plate almost impenetrable, unless you're going up against, let's say, a medium loading premiums or uh, tank destroyer. Now, lower plate at 100 millimeters, you can really pull off some bait shots coming around a corner, but you know, as always, if you're trying to bait a shot around a corner, never expose the track closest to them unless you want to risk taking damage and getting tracked in the process. Now, 80 millimeters of side armor along the entire side, other than where the tracks are located, uh, really good armor. It is capable of side scraping. Just keep an eye on your angles. Don't pull out too much. Don't overextend yourself. And you should be perfectly fine. The lowest armor on this is 25 millimeters. And taking a look at the top armor, it is 40 millimeters, which means this can ricochet possibly 120 millimeter rounds. So being overmatched, they're going to need a 122 or bigger. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into this replay on Canis. You gotta love this map. It's been popping up a lot. Now, for this replay, we're going to be playing with Blade. And, well, we, <laughs> we both got this tank today. And I just had a match inside of it that I was like, you know what? I, I want to show this off. You know, this, this tank is this week. It's the deal of the week. If you can get your hands on this tank, I recommend to do it. Um, as of recent, I've been getting really into faster fire rate heavy tanks, such as the Paladin, the Conqueror, the Chieftain, and uh, apparently the, the Captured King Tiger. And, uh, man, <laughs> no comment on this tank. The reload is just fast. You know, even against 10s, the, the fact that your reload is below 5 seconds and does 200 damage... It's an 88 millimeter, so you can break off tracks and keep them tracked, even if they have a really good crew. So, holding somebody in a spot can really limit movements inside the field. Uh, we had a match today that we took on an IS-7, and all I did was load my standards in and just kept them tracked, and, you know, <laughs> every single 20 seconds, artillery decided to put a shell into them. And... All of his 2,000 plus hit points I got as assist damage. So, even as a bottom tier, this tank still holds up pretty well. The 259 premium ammunition penetration is lacking a tad bit. It is comparable to standard penetrations on most tier 10s, most tier 10 heavies at 259. And it being APCR for the faster travel speed, it, it helps out. And the fact that you do burst 10s inside this tank, I recommend to load a little bit more premiums. To not really overkill it, the amount of ammunition you get inside this tank, it really helps you, it allows you to balance it out. You don't need to focus on one type of ammo the entire time, but it's like, you know, 212 base armor pin can, it, it, it's lacking against tier 9s just a little bit. You can still pin tier 9s with 212 reliably on lower plates and some others, but honestly, against most tier 10s, you're going to be better off loading the premium rounds. Now, it's pretty early inside the match here. We're not really being too aggressive. We just wanted to take the city, get into a position that we can try and hold to the best of our advantage inside of these tanks. Honestly, running two of these, you know, 400 damage every single five seconds is just crazy amounts of damage. Plus, with the speed that they have behind them at that 38 top, they're pretty maneuverable. Now, the gun handling on this, I've noticed that you really... You, I, I thought about putting vertical stabilizers on it, but you, you don't need it. Honestly, the gun rammer, even though it only squeezes out like an extra uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 on your reload, I honestly find it to be worth it. And right here against the SU-130PM, we swapped over to high explosives just because of our reload. You know, the reload in this tank is just crazy fast. So there's not much to really worry about. Swapping shells in the middle of a fight, you know, take your shot, tap A, switch your shell. It's crazy fast, you know. You're, you're not being slapped with that 13 second, 10 second reload that you have most on the big alpha tanks. And speaking of those big alpha tanks, against, let's say, like a Defender or a T-34, you're going to out-damage them. Because your base damage with this gun is about 240 uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna check real fast 
Man, see, look at this. I'm slacking off today. Normally, I have all these numbers on the top of my head. Yeah, 240 on the dot. So then, with a 4.91 second reload, and then let's say, compared to a defender with a 12 second reload, in the time it's going to take that defender to hit you with one shell that does 440 damage, you're going to be able to hit him almost three times for a total of 600 and that's with low rolls. Uh, I love this moment here. I pulled up on the hill and I'm like, I don't know if I can get this shot off, but we're going to try. <laughs> and he, he he puts down saying, great shot. I'm like, yeah, that was. I, I feel so horrible that I pulled up and did that to him. Now, right here, I'm trying to call it saying we're falling back. We want to go to the city. We're marking it on the map. Because that's a position that we want to try and hold. The AMX to our right, he understands what we need to do. We're not fast. And the city is going to be our best bet because of our 80 millimeters of side armor. And everything else that goes on. So, the reload rate on these tanks. You know, so far, we're at 2,000 damage. 100 assist, uh, 10 penetrating shots. 10 penetrating shots at 2,000, that's about 200 average for every single round that's been going through. But we do have four kills. A couple of those could have been very low health or, you know, a, a mid roll. So like a, a 120. Well, honestly, the rate of fire that this tank has, it's just crazy fast at 240. And a DPM check on this gun would probably put it up pretty high. Now... Right here, the light tank, you know, that that's a uh, Chinese tier 8, the 132. If we didn't take him out as quickly as we can, he does have a gun that hits for about 180 every single shot. Four second reload, and it, it would have just been devastating to let him stay up. So, taking him out of the fight was the best bet right away. And we're already up 700 damage from that light tank and the stone cold pulling up. Stone Cold, so far, we watched him use a repair kit to get out of the way. And, yeah, his repair kit's already out, which means if we track him again, it's game over. Now, here's a tiger, and here, here's a show of just how devastating this Captain King Tiger's gun can be. You know, aiming for the track and just holding him there. There's two of us pounding on him, three of us pounding on him. Blade's been taken out, but we're, we're still going strong. Honestly, this tank, it, it surprised me. I wasn't expecting a whole lot. A, a lot of the Tiger variants, you know, they've been outmatched by a lot. They they just get hit, and they don't they don't stand like they used to. But as, as of recent, I've been playing a lot more inside my cap cap no my cap my <laughs> King Tiger tier eight, and my regular Tigers. So like the hammer. And I, I've just been having a lot of fun with their, their reloads. Their reloads are honestly just through the roof and fantastic. Just crazy fast. Nothing to really worry about. Now, <laughs> we set that Stone Cold on fire. That was just, you know, that was a lucky shot. We didn't set him on fire. That still would have been an extra gun inside the game. And right here, uh, this is the downfall to the any Tiger, really. It's traverse speed against the medium tank, but we did re drop him down to 397 hit points. And our vengeance is on full health. Honestly, I don't see the point in letting this roll as long as it went, because it went for a while, you know? If you got to rewind all the way back to, well, whenever I started to fast forward through this. Now, right here, you know, you're, you're capable of telling and seeing if somebody has a really good crew or not. This guy was probably training this crew, and the Vengeance is a really good tank to be training a crew. Now, rather than trying to come up that right side, he should have went up the left side and forced the T95E2 down the hill. Because then he would have had the high superiority advantage. That T95E2, with one of the most recent patches that was put into the game, now has got the hydraulic suspension, which gives it 14 degrees of gun depression, and it makes that tank very hard to go against because of its gun depression. And rather than focusing on the medium that's going to be able to actually throw out the damage against him, he decided to charge the artillery, which, well, costed him the match and every single one of his hit points. 
all of them, all 1400 versus the 396 that the T95 E2 had. So, you know, not going to go over any of the tags, but this was a really nice match. You know, honestly, it was probably one of my first five matches inside this tank, and it, it was just awesome. You know, I, I didn't know what else to say except for holy crap, that went well. 28 shots fired, 25 direct hits, and 24 penetrations. Honestly, we almost never tapped into our premium rounds because we just didn't need to. The 212 penetration as a top tier was all we needed. And going over the board, you know, there, there was a couple tanks that we hit really hard, moved in as a group, and we both had, me and Blade both had fast fire rates, and it just turned out extremely well. I don't see how we could have done that match any better. Well... Uh, th this was Mad Haven, guys. Seriously. Um, all the support you have been giving me over these past couple of weeks, you know, tuning into my live streams. And uh, earlier today, I did a live stream and I just felt like giving away a, an icebreaker. So I gave away an icebreaker. Uh, honestly, Grayson, I hope you enjoy that icebreaker. And I'm going to be checking out your account in the next couple of days. And I hope to see at least 20 plus matches inside that tank. And next time you're on, Send me a friend request. I mean, if you got to, here we go. Right there. SOD Mad Haven. Pause the video if you got to and add me as a friend. Um, anyone really can add me as a friend. I am down to play with any of you. Send me messages and I will try my best to get to you guys as much as I can. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Except for seriously, thank you guys. 64 subscribers. It's crazy. It's slow. It's growing at a really good pace. And I, yeah, no comment. Seriously, no comment. You know, I'm going to start tearing up, guys. Oh, I got to go. <laughs> nah, um, but truly, thank you. Uh, I hope you guys can catch the stream on Saturday. My computer's running perfectly fine. I haven't had any issues. Switching out the hard drive helped out a lot. Um, tomorrow, I'm thinking about streaming a different game. You know, we, we all need to take a break from all the tanks every single once in a while. So tomorrow I was thinking about doing some Killing Floor 2. Um, put down in the comments if it's before the stream. Uh, just saying if you want to see either World of Tanks or to check out Killing Floor 2. It'd be awesome to know what you guys want to see. Uh, other than that, have a great day. I'm out. I'm going to go eat some dinner and then pass out. So I'm off.